Welcome back to another episode of Keta. Today we'll be looking at uh, C Sharp Fluent Validation. Fluent Validation is a library for building strongly typed validation rules. So I like to think of it as a gatekeeper for your APIs. With any request that your API receives, you might have to validate it against a set of rules that you have set for yourself. And Fluent Validation is just there to make it easy and uh, more readable uh, for you. This is the official website for Fluent Validation. If you go to fluentvalidation.net, you should be able to see all the supported platforms. If you also want to dive deep into the code, you can go to the Fluent Validation repo. Um, I'll just show you right now how to install Fluent Validation. If I go to um, the specific project that I would like to install the package on, go to Manage NuGet Packages. If I type in fluentvalidation.asp.net call, it should be able to show me the version or the latest stable version of Fluent Validation. For this example, we'll just be having a very simple Swagger endpoint uh, that receives a few details about a certain user and then it validates it against certain rules that we have set. The structure for our API will just be having a controller uh, models that uh, will be showing our data and as well as validators for each and every model that we do have. Set up our validator, all we need to do is to extend the base class for abstract validator, import fluent validation, and as well as put the model that we need uh, to validate against. Just to be able to set up our validation rules, we need to add a constructor and as well as inside, we can then start putting in rules. The first rule will just simply be um, a rule to check uh, our name to say, okay, this is a string. Check if it's not empty, not null, doesn't have any white space. And this is how we simply do it. And the way it executes is basically just says in the main object, um, check for a property called name and then uh, check the validation rule against what you have done here. You can be able to also chain up other validation rules in conjunction with the existing one. At the second example that just shows you how uh, a chain rule would be like wherein you uh, put in multiple rules against a certain or a single property. There's as well um, other rules that help reduce the number of regular expressions you might have to write Fluent validation also allows you to write custom error message for a certain or for certain properties. This is how you'd go about it. So in this case, you just return you must be a teenager for when um, an age that was given is less than 12. There is two ways to write um, rules for a list. There is a way to write a rule that target a uh, list as a whole and there's a way to write rules that target each and every element of the list so in this case um, it says it will only execute a not null check when the age or is greater than 17 which means uh, we can also check for other properties if they meet a certain condition for a certain rule to um to, to execute as well in here you can be able to say for each and every element inside the hobby list check if the minimum length is three only when the age is greater than 17. last but not least is the rule set for complex of objects or what you can do is delegate the validation to another validator so for example right now the address is an object of address that resides uh, inside the user detail so what we are doing here is basically just say set a validator for this address uh, property and the validator should just be the address validator and the address validator can have certain rule sets that are set against um, its own properties. As to test if our validator really works, all we need to do is just create an instance of the user detail validator 
and we call the method called validate with the user input in this case is the user details it will then after ex executing it will then tell us if the data is valid or not valid it will bring in other information including the error including any rule sets that were executed specifically and any other information regarding the validate on Sega, this is what you will really see. So if you go there and open your API, let's just execute with default values. You will see that it will return a list of errors that were found from the inputs. So if let's say, for example, we give the correct uh, input for age, we will see that next time it won't be having that error. So let's say we give it 17 uh, or 18. And then we execute. You will see then now in the list of errors, it's only emails and any other errors that were found on the model. And the age is removed from the model. When it comes to unit testing, it should be fairly easy for us uh, to unit test our validator. All we need to do is just go to our project. We go and then say add, add a reference. And when we add a reference, we add a reference to the project that we have the validators on. To demonstrate how we can easily unit test our validator, I have set up two unit tests. The other one is checking if the model has any errors and the other one is making sure that the model does not have any errors. So currently the one that checks if the model has any errors, it will be a successful test. And um, you can see it passes properly and it's the one. And the other one will be telling us that it has expected a true, but it is a false. So for me, just to make it pass for the sake of this example, I will just comment out other validations that are being done on and then just leave out only that one. So and I'll save, go back here, run this one test, and it should pass right now. Yes, and the reason being is because whenever I created uh, this user detail, I gave it an initial value of 18. And you can also be able to do an assertion based on um, the error message that was done, dive into each and every property of these thank you very much for watching please be sure to leave a comment and a like and also subscribe to the channel cheers